we're going to be talking about the least interesting part of film photography, and that is scanning, and why you should give a damn about it. I'll be comparing a $200 film scanner and a DIY solution that costs a whopping $2,000. And out of these two options, only one of them made me do this. Wait, that's what film grain looks like? Yes, that's me. Someone who has shot literally hundreds of rolls of film before that point, witnessing film grain for the very first time. But before we get into that, we need to understand what all this gear is. Oh yeah, and just, uh, sorry to butt in here, but if we could just get your phone out and like uh, follow us on uh, Instagram, that'd be really cool. As Zane reads the photo and uh, don't forget to hit subscribe. All right, all right, cool. As an additional heads up, as a disclaimer, no, this is not a tutorial on scanning negatives. If you want to see how I scan with this affordable scanner, Here's a video over there. And if you want to see how I scan with the expensive DIY solution, you're going to have to wait because I'm still working on that video. If you clicked on this video, you're probably a newbie to film photography and you're probably wondering what is the best scanning option for you. And if you're a film veteran, you clicked on this video because you probably want to know what this idiot thinks he knows about scanning. Anyway, so today's video will go as such why you should care about scanning, the differences between camera and flatbed scanning, and the ultimate question, which one should you go for? So first up, why should you even care about scanning? Let's be real, scanning is pretty tedious. It's boring. No one gets romantic about scanning. Like you won't hear stories of people saying, you know, it was at that moment when I saw beam of light shining through the film holder that I realized I was a true film photographer finally. However, along with your choice of lens and film stock, scanning should be up there with your top priorities in terms of how you want your final image to look like. However, one pitfall that seems to be looked over, or at least one that I overlooked for the longest time, is the importance of a good scan. I often feel that Mastering film photography is kind of like climbing a mountain. At the bottom, there's shooting, then there's development, scanning, and at the very top, there's printing. How you doing, ribs? As the image travels in the form of light through your viewfinder and all the way to this point where you get a final image, there is a multitude of variables through which the image in your head must be subjected to that are controlled by you that makes the image unique. You could put in all the hard work up until this point and ruin it all with a bad scan. And you know, I'll be honest, for the longest time I neglected really taking my scanning seriously because of, you know, it's tedious, it's boring, it's blah, no. Which really doesn't make sense because it is a vital stage in the entire process. You know, without a digital copy, you really don't have an image to work with at all. Unless of course you're happy just to look at the negative on its own. And you know, and obviously no one shoots film just for the sake of pressing the shutter button, you know? So if you don't scan, then the only choice you have left in order to see your image is to print. Hopefully by now I should have convinced you of how important it is to get a good scan. In simple terms, a bad scan equals a bad photo, equals no likes to Instagram, which equals no one wants to be your friend. The differences between camera and flatbed scanning. I put on the glass because the sun was shining right in my eyes. Anyway, so what are the options? What are the scanning options? You could get someone else to do it, but that's très expensive. You know, a professional lab scan in the UK can cost anywhere from five pounds to 20 pounds per roll of 35 millimeter. However, the benefit of going down the lab route is that you save a ton of time but the downside is that these labs they don't always get it right believe it or not you are leaving the fate of your images in their hands of course you can do stuff like you know asking for a flat scan but you're still very much leaving most of the control in their hands so we do the scanning ourselves there are plenty of at-home scanning options you could basically spend as much or as little as you want. There are film scanners that cost £30. Shit, you could even use your phone. But those options are 
total garbage. And so we'll be discussing two accessible options that will give you very, very good results. I repeat, this is not a tutorial on how to scan negatives, but rather just advice on which solution is best for you. This consumer grade flatbed scanner that costs $200 and this DIY home solution made up of a mirrorless camera, a vintage macro lens and adapter, a film holder and a light table. The consumer flatbed scanner is convenient, it's quick and easy to set up. However, it does not have the greatest image quality, I must say. However, for most people, the image quality will get the job done. For example, I printed this print from a 645 negative, um, which was scanned with this very scanner. Now, for whatever reason, Canon have decided to stop producing this very scanner, the Canon Scan 9000F Mark II. However, a perfect alternative to this one would be the Epson V600, um, you know, which I think everyone else uses as well. Of course, there are more expensive scanners out there, more expensive flatbed scanners, you know, such as the Plus Tech series or an Epson V800, but I've never used them, so I can't talk about them. Let's talk about some camera scanning. In my opinion, this option will give you the very best results at home. So it should come as no surprise when I first tried camera scanning, this happened. Wait, that's what film grain looks like? Tripod, $8. Macro LEDs, $200. Macro extension tube, $40. Mirrors lens adapter, $40. Film holder, $60. Light table, $30. With a DIY cardboard mask out. Mirrorless camera, $1,800. And $10 a month for Lightroom so you can convert your negatives into positives. I should add that this $2,000 figure is merely a ballpark figure. You could literally spend as much as you want or as little as you want in terms of this DIY home solution. You could get the most expensive camera, the most expensive tripod, the most expensive scanning setup. It really is down to your budget. Yes, for years I had you know, used flatbed scanning and I was completely content with the results, I must say. But when I saw the results from the camera scan, it was like an aha moment. So let's take a side by side comparison. On the left, the camera scan, it looks pretty good. You'd be more than happy with that, but it isn't until you start editing and zoom in a bit closer that you really see the camera scan, the Fuji X-T3 in this case, really shine. Look how much sharper the camera scan is. The colors are far richer, far more brighter. I'm able to push and pull the colors and the exposure way more than I can with the flatbed scan because I'm working with a raw file here. And as you can see, they, they just, <laughs> they don't compare and i don't think you can actually see this in your phone screen and with youtube compression but the film scan you can literally see the film grain like the individual film grain and it's so so nice but with the flatbed scan it's honestly just a pile of pixelated mush so if you're starting from complete scratch like you don't have any equipment it would be kind of hard to justify. It might be quite painful to sort of fork out, you know, nearly two grand. However, if you're someone who's fully invested in film, like you are 100% team film, like digital is for losers. I am film through and through. Yeah, I would recommend camera scanning over flatbed. So I use my X-T3, which I'm filming with right now, to scan my negatives, and it's a relatively new camera. It's only about two years old. Um, I got it new for about $1,800. But by no means do you have to get the newest camera. In fact, I would recommend that you don't buy <laughs> the, the, the newest camera. I would suggest, you know, if you're just, if you don't already have a interchangeable digital camera, you, you really don't need to get the newest one. You could literally, you could get like a really old, like maybe a camera that's like eight years old, like a DSLR, a cheap DSLR. You know, you could even get like a, a secondhand Fuji X-T1 for like $400. Um, the point is that it, it just it just needs to be a digital camera that preferably shoots raw and has, you know, an interchangeable lens um, sort of system that will, 
get you better results than any flatbed scanner because these digital camera sensors are just they're just far superior to what you'd find in a flatbed scanner and along with some really good glass like even the vintage glass is still really really good i use a vintage macro lens with an adapter um and i'm just and i'm you know i, I I can't complain. An even cheaper option is just to get a macro extension tube and use that alongside whatever lenses you already have. Me personally, I like to use a macro lens, a true macro lens with a macro adapter because I want that true one-to-one -one macro ratio. Apparently this makes people feel uncomfortable. I did this on my Instagram and people felt really uneasy when I did this. I have no idea why. And the other main benefit, you know, the benefit that really pushed me towards camera scanning is how much faster it is. I can confidently say that my flatbed scanning workflow is as efficient and as sort of streamlined as it possibly can be. But even then, it would take me minimum 45 minutes to scan an entire roll of 36 exposures. That is because it takes the scanner, the flatbed scanner, a minimum of around two minutes to scan just one frame. However, with a camera scan, the time it takes to scan one frame is basically whatever you set the shutter speed to. In my case, I scan everything at 1 15th of a second. So if you just do some simple maths right there, two minutes times 36, you're looking at over an hour and a half to scan just one roll of film. And that doesn't include the time it takes to cut a roll of film into strips of six to load the film holders, to unload the film holders, all those little bits that add to the overall duration. Whereas if you multiply 1 15th of a second by 36, you know, it's pretty obvious which one is a lot faster. Which should you go for? So the two options I've presented to you today are what I consider, you know, to be of a good enough quality to be used in a professional setting, as in the end result is good enough to charge money for it. Of course, you guys will have your own options, your own opinions, that's totally fine. So ultimately, which scanning is best for you. If you already own a interchangeable lens camera, um, you know, of any kind, which, you know, which I assume most of you will, I would 1000% oh, tell you to do, to go down the camera scanning route. If you value image quality above everything else, that like that is your main priority, camera scan, for sure. However, if you're happy with image quality, that's good enough for Instagram. Like you only really just share your photos, you know, on the internet, you only show your photos you know, over the phone to, or to your other friends, then the flatbed scanner will get you results that you're gonna be more than happy with. But me personally, I would still go for the, I would, you know, I would find a way to save up the money. I would still try to find a way to go for that camera scan over the flatbed, just because it's just so much better. <laughs> the, the, the image quality is just that much better and it's just a lot faster. Bloody hell, mate, can you get focused? Okay, so for this year, I might, I might not necessarily upload every week. Um, at minimum, at minimum, I'm gonna upload once every two weeks because I wanna sort of take more time to make each video as good as it can be. So before it took me maybe two to three days to make a video, now I'm sort of dedicating more, more like five to six days to make a video. Cause I really wanna, you know, I really wanna grow this channel. I, re I really want to um, build the, build up that community do me a favor and hit give us a little subscribe if you actually did enjoy it i've been working on the next video that's going to be coming up um, for the past you know week or so and just to give you a preview of what the next video is i'm basically challenging myself to shoot with the fuji x 100v this guy over here every single day but the catch is i'm only going to be shooting in black and white because <laughs> because I basically think black and white photography is boring. Follow me on Instagram as they read a photo. I post there daily. You know, if you guys want to see what I'm up to every single day, um, since I'll be uploading less, then that is the best place to hit me up with a question and just to check out my work. All right, guys, keep learning, keep shooting. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.